I've got good news. All of you are invited to my home tonight for a meal. Now, when you walk through the front door, to the left is my desk. You'll see a lamp, a laptop, and a stack of books. It's a pretty sparse desk. But if you look above it, you'll see a mantle. And along the mantle are black and white framed photographs, carefully placed. Those are photos of our parents and our grandparents. In my family, we save space for each other. And so that space above the mantle, that's for our elders. And that is so we can constantly be reminded of what they imparted to us, the lessons and the stories. So you're invited to my home for a meal with my family. And this stool is to save space for my father, who is no longer with us. And also joining us, my mom, my husband, and one of my bonus sons. And you are sharing space with them right now in the audience. So, welcome. We have prepared quite the spread for you. You're gonna be excited. When you look at the countertops, they are covered with all of your favorite foods. Your drink of choice is waiting for you. The smells, the sounds, you are exactly where you want to be at this moment. You're looking around, you're feeling really good, and then all of a sudden, you see that person. And you know who I'm talking about. It's that person who irks you like no other. And they're here tonight in my home. And in the words of one of my favorite comedians, Tony Baker, you think to yourself, what in the haberdasheries are they doing here? I know, it's a lot. And you feel like you're about to lose it. So let me tell you what's happening right now, all right? Your sympathetic nervous system is firing things off. And that's because your amygdala, which processes emotions, is trying to figure out if you need to go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode. But there is another option. One of the things my parents taught me is that there are other ways to navigate clashes and disputes. There actually is a way to have dignity in disagreement. As a wife, a daughter, a sister, a colleague, a journalist, a friend, I've learned how to navigate all sorts of conflicts in this ever-evolving complex world of ours with dignity. It's a skill. And I want to share it with all of you so that you know how to use it when you need it. All right, who remembers Pop? Pop, oh, thank God, we got one person. Someone, okay, thank you. <laughs> Always a mom will help you out. Pop, I grew up with Pop in the Midwest as a kid. That's what we called soda, all right? Now people are nodding. All right, so I grew up with Pop and the game of 20 questions at just about every family meal. Now, there are many ways that you can play 20 questions, but this is how we played it. One person would pick a noun, and everyone around the table would ask up to 20 questions. And those questions had to elicit a yes or no response, because the goal was to guess this noun that the one person selected. After several rounds, I'm sure you can imagine how absolutely unfulfilling this game can get when you hear yes, no, yes, no, no, I said no, yes, no, again and again and again. So we deviated just a bit, and we would connect the so-called secret noun to things that we were learning in school, family stories, and also the news of the day, issues happening around the world. That opened up all sorts of conversations and differences of opinion. Uh, let's just keep it real. There was a lot of disagreement uh, between my older brother and I at that age. That was inevitable. And yet, it did not end the game. Nobody was blocked, canceled, or deleted because of it. In my family, my dad counseled others, and my mom taught conflict mediation to her fourth grade students. 
So we watched and learned. And they showed us how to inquire at a deeper level, to figure out how we arrived at a particular opinion or idea. In other words, they taught us to get curious. Getting curious means that we switch from judgment mode and we open ourselves up to learning mode. When we're curious, it's less likely that we dehumanize another person and more likely that we start to realize, you know what? There's probably a story behind that person's beliefs. I will tell you, curiosity is not automatic, especially when you are in an argument. It's really hard. It's something that you have to cultivate and it's like a muscle that you're trying to work out and you really need to just strengthen it and use it again and again and again. I learned in my research on curiosity that we can develop it. There are some simple, approachable ways that we can, we can try. So for one, we should read books on various topics to expand our way of thinking. And we should also do things that intrigue us. So for me, that would be learning how to roller dance. For someone else, it might be traveling to a place and learning about the history and the culture. And we should also really work to get to know people outside of our social circles. I know it's intimidating, and it can also be incredibly rewarding. Now, if you are in a disagreement with another person, the most significant way to get and stay curious is to ask meaningful questions. You see, harnessing curiosity means that we recognize we don't have all the answers. None of us do. So there's a gap, and we want to fill that gap. So we have to learn, which means we ask questions, questions that take us much more we listen, we gotta go beyond the yes or no responses. And the goal is to ask questions, not just of others with humility, but to ask questions of ourselves first. So imagine, right, you're, you're having this disagreement, you're in an argument, you know your blood is boiling. Okay, if you're like me, you're sweating, your upper lip is a little moist, you're, everything is raging. And so you need to pause and slow down and ask yourself, hold up, what am I feeling? And why am I feeling this? What makes me think that I'm right? And how are my biases impacting my perceptions with this issue? When we ask ourselves those questions first, that's how we get to understand ourselves at a deeper level. And it also means we're much more likely to ask genuine, curious questions of the other person. Questions like, what sorts of life experiences led you to this decision? What do you think is oversimplified about this issue? What do you want to understand about others that disagree with you on this matter? And what do you want them to understand about you? These are the types of questions that take us into people's personal stories. When we ask them, the other person is much more likely to open up and share parts of themselves that we never saw before. And when that happens, we start to understand where they're coming from, whether or not we agree with them. The idea is to learn what's behind their beliefs. And when we do that, that's when we can start to piece together the story. And we also better position ourselves to share our perspectives, our stories, when it's time. So I don't know how things worked in your home, but in my house, as a kid, if the doorbell ever rang just before dinner, you would freeze. And if you were near the front door, you would carefully tiptoe away in the hopes that the person on the other side could not see you through the glass. Because nobody wants to answer the door to solicitors selling magazine subscriptions, handing out religious pamphlets, or asking you to buy candy just before dinner. Nobody, except my dad. My dad was one of the few people in the neighborhood who actually invited solicitors inside the home. Some of them even got a cup of tea. 
or a can of 7-Up as they converse with them. Now and then, I would eavesdrop on these conversations. And I noticed something. My dad always listened, and the other person was always sharing their personal story. It was remarkable. They were vulnerable with him. They shared their dreams, what they were learning, things that challenged them, their regrets. They were no longer a solicitor. They had become a guest. A guest who felt valued, respected, and seen. All because Papa listened to them. So that was my dad's magic skill. Listening without judgment. And I'll tell you, that does not mean that he agreed with everybody. Oftentimes, he did not jive with people's logic. And that was OK with him. He was fine with that. And I, I actually think he secretly enjoyed it. Because sharing space with someone who had opposing views meant that he had an opportunity to learn something, especially if what they shared challenged his beliefs. We, as human beings, and I'm putting myself in this category with everyone, we really think we're good listeners. We think it's the skill that we're born with. Think again. Listening is hard work. It takes time and it takes energy, and some of us do not want to exude that energy, maybe because there's a power dynamic at play, or because we just don't think the other person is worth our time. But if we listen, we start to understand. And then when we start to understand, it's harder to vilify someone simply because they don't believe the same things that we do. Listening with understanding and listening without judgment, that is absolutely vital to disagreeing with dignity. And we can do it by asking curious questions and then listening deeply to the other person's response. So when we're listening, we are not forming this rebuttal in our heads, right? So that we can like tap the person if we don't like what they're saying. As soon as they're done talking, that's not what we're doing. We're listening to understand how they arrived at a particular destination. And so we do that by listening for what's most valuable and important to them. And then when we think we have a handle on things, we offer our interpretation, our understanding of what the person said. And then we ask them to correct us. Because yes, oftentimes, we're wrong. And then when that's done, if they're willing, we ask them to share more, to go deeper. Because that's when we can start to get a more accurate picture of their story. This is a listening technique that I learned from the Center for Understanding and Conflict out in California. And it's used by conflict mediators, journalists, psychologists, and others. And it is transformative. It has literally changed the way I communicate. It slows things down in a disagreement. It builds trust. It gives the other person space to reflect and to think and to hear themselves process things out loud. And it shows understanding, not acknowledgment. So two very different things. And when we listen in this way, what happens is we start to learn the why behind someone's actions and words and behaviors. That does not mean that we're now living in bliss with this rival. And it also does not condone despicable acts and hateful words. That's not what this is about. I want you to think of this type of listening as taking in a really juicy mystery. And the more you listen deeply, the more clues are revealed. Sometimes assumptions are debunked. And in the words of the late, great, notorious B.I.G., if you don't know, now you know. And by that, I mean what wasn't clear before, now is. So once you've asked those genuine, curious questions, and you've listened deeply, you are in the sweet spot. 
this is exactly where you want to be. This is a place where you now get to share your stories, your perspectives on the issue, because you first gifted that to the other person. They are much more likely to listen now that you offered that to them. We can all agree that we like the bills, right? For the most part in this room, wonderful. Thank you for the clap. That is how you can start a conversation when there's a disagreement and you're trying to work through it. Begin with something you have in common. Toss in some humor if you think it will land well. Say to someone, we just don't see eye to eye on this and we're just gonna eat a disagree and just walk away and call it a day. That is very different from, all right, we can agree that New York style pizza top Chicago style any day of the week. Thank you. But we just can't agree on this one thing. So let's talk through it. And after we've done that, we can ask, now that we understand each other's perspectives, how do we move forward? Disagreeing with dignity means accepting that the other person may never change their mind. They may never agree with us. It's being cognitively flexible and recognizing that our own unique lived experiences, they influence our stories. And conflicts or disagreements, they have so many different angles. So naturally, we'll interpret those differently. And when we're okay with that, we have an opening for a conversation and possibly even resolution with our self-worth intact. There are some philosophers who say that the purpose of argument is progress, it's to move forward. In a disagreement, we don't have to name a winner or a loser. All parties can arrive at a place of awareness and that can be enough. Now, I would imagine that some of you are thinking right now, Thank you for sharing those personal family stories with us. That's really sweet. But what you're saying is highly unrealistic. It sounds nice, but it will probably never happen, and I just can't do it. And if you're thinking that, that is absolutely OK. But I will offer you this. It's already been done. Supreme Court justices, former Supreme Court justices, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Antonin Scalia did it. Former President Barack Obama and former Speaker of the House, John Boehner, did it. And they did it on a world stage for everyone to judge and criticize. In my own little world, I've done it with colleagues and family members many times over. We live in a wildly diverse and complicated world. That means conflicts and disputes are inescapable. And yet friends do not have to turn into foes and colleagues into caricatures if we can recognize that some disagreements are opportunities. So I have news for you. That person that you saw in my house, they're still there. And you're still there too, you haven't left. You see them across the room. So now that you know what you know, I just want to encourage you. You got this. Take a deep breath. Walk across the room and disagree with dignity. Try it. That relationship dynamic might just change if you do so. And at the very least, you can strengthen one of the most important relationships that you have and that's your relationship with yourself. Thank you.